Today's video is part of the Ugly Duck Challenge here on YouTube, so let's see if we can turn this ugly duck into a beautiful swan. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Sab with Sab's Rehabs. I take old outdated furniture that's often destined for the trash and give it a whole new look. As I mentioned before, today's video is part of the Ugly Duck Challenge here on YouTube. It is also a giveaway video because I have reached 25,000 subscribers, woohoo! And I'm going to go over five mistakes to avoid when using stripper. This is a mid-century dresser made by the furniture company Dixie that I found on Facebook Marketplace for $30. It looks like someone has previously refinished it before and you can see that that finish is definitely failing. There are bumps and scratches and dings all over. There is also veneer pieces that some is missing, some are just hanging off. This place is going to have plenty of repairs. It is a beautiful piece, but in sad shape right now, but we're going to take this piece and like I said, turn this ugly duck, hopefully into a beautiful swan. From looking at the nicks and dings all over, I can tell there's multiple layers on this piece to achieve this walnut look finish that was attempted by someone. And to figure out what I'm working with, I grab my carbide scraper and scrape a spot just to see what I'm working with underneath all this so I know how to approach it. There is this beautiful blonde veneer, so I decide I'm going to go ahead and use stripper and strip it back down to the original finish. There are a lot of different strippers out there on the market. So my first tip or mistake to avoid is to use the citrus strip. I know a lot of people use it, but it's gonna leave you a gooey sticky mess. And in my opinion, in comparison, it doesn't even compare to how well clean strips quick strip works. My next tip of advice is to not do stripper in an enclosed area. You want to make sure you have plenty of ventilation because this stuff smells really strong. My third mistake to avoid is grabbing the 30 minute formula. Make sure you grab that 15 minute formula because it is twice as fast and time is money in this business. If you are new to stripping or have never stripped a piece of furniture before, once you have your ventilation set up and the correct PPE all on, you want to pour a thick layer of the stripper on the surface. And that leads me to point number four is to not use a minimal amount of product. You want to use a lot of product here. It will make this scraping process a lot easier for you. You can see here how quick this product works. After about 15 minutes, the old paint finish is completely bubbled up. So you want to grab a scraper and I scrape it off into one pile on each side and then I scrape that pile into a canister. Now I just poured a lot of stripper onto the top of this dresser so the wood underneath is wet. If possible, you want to use a plastic scraper instead of a metal one like I have here to avoid damaging or scraping the wood underneath. I didn't have any plastic ones in stock, so I'm gently using a metal one here to scrape this finish off. I scrape this stuff into an old paint can and seal it off because this stripper is a toxic chemical, so make sure you search for your local area how to dispose of products like this. Here is what the top looks like after doing one layer of the stripper. You can see that not enough of the finish is really off. So that leads me to mistake or point number five about using stripper is going in the mindset thinking that only one coat is going to do it. It's most times you have to do two coats of stripper to get enough of the finish off to get to the next step of sanding. An extra free tip I have about stripping is to not strip vertical surfaces vertically. I turn them horizontally so the stripper can set better and it works better this way for me. After stripper, the surface needs to be clean and the stripper needs to be neutralized. So mineral spirits is a good way to do that. I pour a generous amount onto the surface, use some fine grade steel wool and scrub the surface and then wipe the remaining excess away with the cloth. 
I do want to take a moment and thank the host of our Ugly Duck Challenge. That is Corey over at Desert DIY. If you haven't already followed or subscribed to her channel, please go ahead and do that now. You can see how this piece isn't quite there yet, but it's definitely looking a lot better. I go ahead and remove the wooden handles, the drawers, and clean out the inside of the dresser so I can make a better assessment of what all repairs I need to make. I mentioned earlier that today's video is also a giveaway video for me reaching over 25,000 subscribers on my channel. I am just completely blown away by the amount of support I have. I will mention at some point in the video what the giveaway will be and how to make yourself eligible. So all the nicks and dings are superficial on this piece and will come out with sanding. The main issue is its veneer. That's the most repairs that I have to do. So I knocked off this piece of veneer when I was stripping. So I just used wood glue to put it back into place and then taped it until the glue dried. This was kind of an issue all over the dresser. So I just went along gluing the veneer back down and either taping or clamping it into place. If you happen to be the type of person who likes to see old furniture repaired and fixed up to look brand new in order to stay out of our landfills, then you are definitely in the right place. So I ask you to go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. There's only one spot here where the veneer is completely missing, so I use a box knife to cut that edge there to make it straight. This is some birch banding veneer that I found off Amazon, and it has glue on the back already. So I just cut a piece down to size to fit in that little space, taped it into place, and used an iron on high setting to heat up the glue and make it stick into place. Once everything cooled off, I removed the tape and used a box knife to cut off any excess veneer. My original plan was to stain the top, the base, and the wooden handles. So I sanded those with 120 grit sandpaper and then came back over that surface again with 220 grit sandpaper. I also went over all other surfaces with 220 grit sandpaper to scuff sand before paint. I sanded everywhere, the inside of the drawers, the outside of the drawers, the entire body, the top, the base. I sanded this piece, I want to say for probably about three to four hours. Tons and tons of sanding. This is a beautiful piece with good bones that came to me in pretty rough condition. So I'm doing all this sanding, trying to get it into the most like new condition that I can. All right, the journey to figure out what this piece is going to look like begins. After all that sanding, I grab a damp cloth to wipe off the base and I taped it off because I'm going to stain it. This is Dark Walnut by Varathane. I've got some overspray so you can't see the can anyways. But this is a color that I use often on my channel. I really like the dark, dark walnut color. And I go ahead and apply this stain and I'm kind of not liking it on the base, but you know, silly me, I keep going with it and apply it to the wooden handles and I just decide that this dark stain isn't really doing this piece justice. So I have to do a lot more sanding. I get my sander back out after the stain was dry, sanded it back off and decide that I'm going to go a different route than this dark stain. Now that it's completely sanded, let's start over. These handles are beautiful and I'm really liking this more natural wood look that the handles do have. So I decided to go ahead instead of staining to do a beige wash. This piece was so dark when it came to me. So I decided I'm going to try to lighten it up a bit. 
So this is a beige. I can't even tell you what color it is. It's just something I mixed up in my workshop. I use a brown and a cream to make this light beige and then water it down 50% paint, 50% water. You put it on and then wipe it back and you can see how it just adds a little bit of a hint touch difference. And I end up doing two coats of that to get these handles the look that I want. I also applied it to the base as well because I decided that I did like that and I protected the base and the handles. I went ahead and did two coats of this water-based polyurethane. This piece is one of the most indecisive pieces I've been on. I also did the beige wash on the top, but I decided I just don't really like the way that it's looking. It didn't take it correctly, so I'm gonna go a different route there. I have a different types and patches of veneer on this piece to fix the missing pieces. So I figured the best way to cover that is to go ahead and paint the body and the drawers of this piece. I am still liking the natural wood finish on the base so I do tape that up. And for primer today, I am using Kills Primer in gray. And I load that up in my 3M AccuSpray and make sure to water it down so it sprays smoothly through my gun. I spray two coats of primer on the body and the drawers and allow it to dry two hours in between each coat of primer. Using the spray gun makes it a lot faster, but if you don't have a spray gun, this is definitely a step that you can do by painting by hand or rolling on with a roller. All right, all right, all right. It is giveaway time. What is the giveaway? Well, since I have 25,000 subscribers, we're gonna do a $25 gift card from Amazon. How do you make yourself eligible? First, you have to like this video, then share this video, and then also comment that you've done so. I will pen the comment and respond to the person who is the winner of the giveaway. Best of luck. I let the primer set overnight and then the next day I grabbed a 220 grit sanding sponge and lightly went over the surface, wiped the dust away with the lint free cloth to get it ready for painting. And like I mentioned before, I was super indecisive with this piece and I didn't know what color I wanted to paint it. So I made a post on my Instagram asking people to vote for which paint color that they like best. I'm mixing up some custom colors in my workshop. The votes were all over the place. Thank you for all of those that voted. But I ended up just going with the favorite one that I liked and that was Olive Branch. Instead of going out and buying a new color every single time, I'm working with the paint that I have in my workshop. This is Split Rail from Bare, and I put that into my 3M AccuSpray cup, and then I add this Cinder Gray by Melange. This is a dark gray color, and I'm trying to, you know, achieve this dark chocolate green color. And I mix it together and I spray on one coat and decide that this is a little bit more chocolatey and I wanted more of a green or gray hue to it. So I do add another one of those cinder gray. So it ends up being about a 50-50 mixture of the split rail color and the cinder gray. I end up spraying three coats of this olive branch, allowing it to dry a couple hours in between each coat. And to make sure that I get a nice smooth finish, I do sand with an 800 grit sanding sponge in between each coat of paint. I am so thankful for all the love and support that my channel gets, but I want to give a special shout out to Jean or the Jeannie Dorsey for buying me five coffees through my buy me a coffee. Thank you so much. And I'll be honest here, after all the paint dried and I removed the tape off the base, I am not for sure if I'm happy with the way that this looks. I mean, it's looking better, but I, I can't decide whether I like it or not. I decide to go ahead and keep moving forward and top coat this piece, so I'm using a water-based polyurethane in the crystal clear satin finish. I use the same container that I used that had my paint in it and just add the top coat directly in it and mix it together. You can see that gives it kind of a little green gray hue and this is a tip to do whenever you're 
working our top coating over dark colors. Adding a little bit of the paint into your top coat will help avoid streaks. I spray three coats of the polyurethane, allowing it to dry at least two hours in between each coat, and then I let everything sit overnight. There are a lot of other furniture flippers participating in this ugly duck challenge, so make sure that you check out their videos as well. I'll have a link down below in the description for the playlist, or I'll also have a convenient button for you to hit at the end of this video. Okay, I put the wooden handles back into place on this piece and decide that it's not finished. I still need something to kind of bring it all together. So I want to add some detail to the sides of these drawers. This is a stencil from Redesign with Prima and it's part of the Katcha line. Katcha was so generous and kind to send this to me and I'm so excited. I absolutely love this pattern. So I line my drawers up to where they're nice and flush and check my placement. Once I'm happy with my placement, I grab 3M adhesive spray and spray it to the back of the stencil. This just helps stop bleed through and hold your stencil into place when you don't really have a spot to tape it on so I set it back down and then use my hands to press all over to make sure that it is nice and stuck all right gold is always a great choice but lately I have been obsessed with this white gold gilding wax I think it adds the perfect soft touch I use a sponge applicator in a dab 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 or stipple motion to fill in the stencil and I'm not going to lie, this did take a while since I had to do both sides of the drawers, but it kind of was a fun process. I like seeing the stencil fill as I worked. Once I had the stencil completely full, I rip it up in one swift motion to expose this beautiful light white gold pattern on the sides of the drawers. I let the gilding wax set for a few hours and then came back with a cloth and buffed it. I also applied wax to the wooden drawer slides to help the drawers slide in and out easy. And to finish off the drawers, I use Howard feed-in wax on the inside of the drawers just to moisturize and freshen up the wood and give it an amazing smell. I let the Howard sit there for a few hours and then came back and buffed off the excess. After that, the only thing left to do was to put the piece completely back together and show you guys the before and after. Alright, let's take a quick look back at the beginning so you can appreciate the full journey that this piece has taken. And then here is our after! I doubted myself so many times along this journey, but thankfully I have other furniture flipping friends that were able to give me advice and tell me that I did create a beautiful piece. So I want to know your thoughts. Did I take this ugly duck and still make it better, but still it's an ugly duck? Or did I take this ugly duck and turn it into a beautiful swan? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's all I have for you today. As always, until next time.